Most of you can probably relate to this, but my wife's boyfriend doesn't let me watch ReZero anymore, so I've gotta find a new isekai to replace it. Luckily, this anime season has enough isekai to feed an entire colony of weebs, although watching all of them has made me feel like my brain cells were the ones that got isekai -ed. But anyway, I'm a kid nut. Please remember to like the video if you haven't already, and hopefully you enjoy my first impressions of every new isekai that's airing this season. Time I got reincarnated as a slime didn't even want to join Isekai Quartet because it was getting its very own spin-off titled The Slime Diaries. It's a decent title, I'm just glad they didn't go with Diary of Slime because if you say it fast. Anyway, it's a really wholesome, adorable spin-off of the main story and it's even created an entirely new genre. Slime of Life. The art style is noticeably different. Rimuru looks a bit more like Rimuwu, the side characters get a lot more screen time, and the episodes are surprisingly full length, so don't sleep on this just because it's a spin-off. You don't even have to be caught up to watch it either. I believe the time period is about halfway through season 1, but honestly, even if you haven't seen either season, you might still enjoy this spin-off as long as you're a fan of slimes. If you're not a fan of slimes, then allow me to recommend this isekai instead. The title is so long it might take me 300 years to pronounce it, so I'm just going to call this anime what it is. Slime Genocide. I wasn't planning on watching this until I saw the magic word in the synopsis. Witches and isekai are typically a good combination in my experience, and this anime is no exception. The protagonist is ridiculously overpowered and ridiculously racist against slimes. She gets isekai'd and immediately spends the next 300 years relentlessly holocausting the slime population for absolutely no reason. It's weird because she's extremely wholesome in almost every other scenario, but when it comes to slimes, she's like, let's fucking mow them down. I'm hoping she'll get to fight Rimuru as the final boss, but there's not really much of a plot. Although nowadays, I guess most isekai do come with the plot sold separately. This is one of those anime you're not supposed to take seriously, but it's a great way to relieve stress, and it just feels good to watch. An isekai that practically no one is talking about is called Full Dive. The ultimate next-gen Full Dive RPG is even fucking shittier than real life. Yeah, so the title came directly from Google Translate's asshole, but this anime is pretty much what the first season of Sword Art Online should have been. The protagonist is, of course, a gamer. Except he's absolute dog shit. Instead of completing the tutorial like everyone else, he accidentally murders an essential NPC, making himself the most wanted criminal in the town. He's just... Inting, basically. This kid is Wood5. Please report him after the video. This anime reminded me of the first time I ever played Skyrim. For some reason, I decided to attack the first chicken I saw, but ended up having to fight basically the entire village. There was a literal army of NPCs trying to avenge the death of their beloved chickens, so I totally understand what bootleg Kirito is going through here. I can't say there's anything special about the characters or the world, but so far, every episode has been really exciting, and although the story might feel pretty predictable at times, there's also a lot of surprise twists and revelations, especially in the form of considerably decent cliffhangers. Every week, I look forward to watching the next episode, even though this anime is objectively not that good. It's like a bag of regular Lay's potato chips, not the best flavor out there, but if it's available, it's still better than nothing. The problem with this anime and Lay's potato chips is that the initial experience may be very exhilarating, but the excitement doesn't feel sustainable in the long term. Every potato chip leaves me craving another one, until after about a dozen or so, the roof of my mouth feels like Subaru during the rabbit scene. Similarly, I expect this anime to reach the point where it's hurting my mouth and I've got no choice but to drop it. But as of right now, I'm still having a pretty good time, so I would recommend watching at least the first few episodes. Combatants Will Be Dispatched is probably the most entertaining isekai of the season. For once, the protagonist knows why he's being sent to another world and actually goes there willingly. Well, they kind of just hand him a lolly and say good luck, but the premise is pretty unique for an isekai. The characters are what really kept my attention though. Everyone's batshit insane and the protagonist reminds me of Kazuma if Kazuma had combat training and a coke addiction. His traveling companion is a robot lolly with a gun, who reveals in episode 3 that that robots don't have reproductive organs. 
This anime is yet to make me audibly laugh, but there is a lot of attempted humor which is amusing at the very least. An example of the author's comedic brilliance was when the main character says penis festival. <laughs> an accurate description of my YouTube audience. I think the funniest moment so far was when the protagonist complains about the anime not having enough fan service, which then allows the studio to of course animate a bunch of hypothetical fan service to show us what the fan service would have looked like if there was any fan service. Which there was. I wouldn't dare put this anime in the same tier as Konosuba or even Cautious Hero, but if you're a fan of those type of isekai then you're probably gonna enjoy this one too. Also airing in spring 2021 is the second season of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. I saw the first season a few years ago, but at the time I used to speedrun all sorts of 12 episode harems without leaving my bed for several weeks at a time, so they all kind of blend together in my memory and I honestly couldn't remember anything about this anime except for... <laughs> Rem. I know, that's like more ironic than pirating episodes of One Piece, but thankfully all my memories returned as soon as I saw the mal tags. Harem, comedy, magic, ecchi, and fantasy are basically the five pieces of Exodia as far as I'm concerned. I also couldn't help but notice that one of the characters in the key visual looks a lot like a VTuber. Well, that was sadly coincidental, but to my surprise, there actually was a VTuber cameo in the second episode, and that's the moment I realized this anime deserves no less than a 9. I know that rating's a bit low, but this VTuber reference did teach me a very valuable lesson. You see, it helped me realize that right now, now, I could be talking about VTubers instead of this anime. So on that note, the nation of Pekoland has many others that look similar to Pekora, including the rabbit shown in this screenshot. But while Pekora herself is royalty, it's likely that this rabbit is nothing more than just an ordinary peasant, meaning this wasn't literally a Pekora cameo. <laughs> Expanding on the subject of Hololive lore, a fun fact about Pekoland is that their entire language consists only of the word Peko. And yeah, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about Season 2 of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. In case you're looking for a more serious isekai, this one is called The Saint's Magic Power is Omnipotent. This anime is very relaxing, pretty immersive too, and it's one of the few isekai that actually feels realistic. The protagonist doesn't get trucked in the ass, turned into a spider, trapped inside a game, or tasked with 1v1ing a demon king. She's just a normal person minding her own business. But to put it bluntly, it's kind of boring, so if you're expecting a ton of action and excitement, this anime will probably feel like you're watching the censor version of Redo of Healer. But as long as you don't expect it to be like every other isekai you've experienced in the past, you can find a lot of enjoyment in this series, especially if you're in the mood for a nice, calming, realistic slice of life. A slightly less realistic slice of life is Kumo Deska Nanika. I refuse to say the English title, it's redundant and insulting to the quality of such an incredible isekai. This began airing last season, but it's still ongoing this season, and just really funny, cute, and enjoyable. I've read criticism about the generic narrative and the terrible CGI, but I don't think those people understood what they were watching. Contrary to popular belief, this isn't an anime, it's an extended demonstration of how talented Aoi Yuki is. The story, art, and side character characters are basically just filler. Anything that doesn't involve Aoi Yuki is totally optional, so to properly evaluate this anime instead of deciding how good it was, the question you should be asking is how hard did Aoi Yuki flex? <laughs> The main character is not the spider, it's Aoi Yuki. In fact, just the words Aoi Yuki should be the title of this series, even for the light novels. If you want to watch an extremely good voice actress having a lot of fun pretending to be a spider, this is one of the most enjoyable isekai available. Of course, the CGI is really bad, but it doesn't matter because you could literally watch this anime blindfolded and still give it an Aoi Yuki out of 10. Last but not least, the ReZero Season 2 English dub is still airing right now, and although myself and most of you prefer subs 99% of the time, ReZero's English dub is incredibly good and definitely worth checking out. Let's be honest, you're gonna rewatch season 2 anyway, so why not give it a chance? It's one of the best dubs I've ever experienced, and I always tend to pick up on little details I might have overlooked while watching the sub. Anyway, I'm not gonna milk this video any longer. Before you go, please drop me a like to help validate my existence. I'm a kid nut, and I hope I helped you find a new isekai to watch, or maybe just entertained you with another weekly shitpost. 
but let me know in the comments what you guys are watching this season. Once again, thanks for supporting all these new videos. I'm out for now though. Keep talking about isekai. Peace out.